Hello, Price is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, October 23rd, 2022, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 19. Brethren, I would have you know that the gospel which was preached by me is not man's gospel, for I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it, and I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born had called me through his grace and was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia, and again I returned to Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas, and remained with him for fifteen days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the brother of our Lord. And today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 8, verses 26-39. through 39. At that time, as Jesus arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he lived not in a house but among the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beseech you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him, and he was kept under guard and bound in chains and fetters, but he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them leave. Then the demons came out of the men man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the herdsmen saw what happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus, and they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how he who had been possessed with the demons was healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged him that he might remain with him. But he sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. What I would like to emphasize in this morning's reflection is the very fact that when Jesus healed the man with the many demons, the community around the man was seized with such a great fear that they asked Jesus to leave their city. Why would they do that? He had just performed such a great and merciful act, it seems crazy, really for the people to ask him to leave. Well, you sort of have to think about the implications of him staying. If he had chosen to stay, what would have happened to the rest of the people in that area? What would have been unearthed in them? The man with the demons in him, he was obvious and obvious in need of healing and restoration to wholeness. But in fact, everyone in that community had something that needed to be healed. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think they wanted to be. Why would I say such a thing? Because they put up with the demoniac. That that demoniac was somebody that they just saw as part of the fabric of their society. So they knew what to expect when they came across him, or they knew to avoid him when they saw him from afar. But what evil lurks in the others? 
what demons are there that need to be removed. Because these things are transformational. There is a saying, the better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. I think humanity's greatest fear is fear itself, and most specifically fear of that which is unpredictable. We like to fool ourselves into thinking that we're in control of our situations, of our environments. Every once in a while, something comes along. They call them accidents. An accident literally is something that happens out of the ordinary. If you look at a piece of music, when you have a sharp and a flat where there didn't used to be one, it would be called an accidental because it is something that is only there for an instant and out of the ordinary. And then next measure, it's gone. And so these people would have been afraid of how their lives would have to change because of the presence of Jesus. If they were willing to let this man remain a demoniac, if they were willing to let him remain a part of the fabric of their society instead of worrying about his healing, about making him better, about putting him in his right mind, then on, in all honesty, what in the world lurks in them? And I think that's why they ask him to leave, because they are unprepared to deal with the reality of their own demons. They are unprepared to deal with something that isn't within the realm of their own quote-unquote normal. Because when Jesus comes to you, you are not going to stay the same. So I think that is, in the end, why they ask him to leave because they are not ready to give up their old ways of life. They would prefer to keep the demoniac than have to change into something unpredictable. And that's a real tragedy. And that's why, in all likelihood, they were seized with great fear, maybe even more than that of the demoniacs themselves, the demons themselves. So these are things to ponder. Where are we in our lives? What needs to change in our lives? If Jesus came right now, would we ask him to stay? Or would we ask him to go away? I know what we would like to say, but I wonder what we would say when presented with such an opportunity. May God have mercy in us. May he lead us and guide us. And may we have the wisdom to be able to determine what a life in Christ might indeed look like. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. You have a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.